Hello students, in this video we'll prove the back cab identity. The back cab identity states that a vector A cross a vector B cross C, so the order of the parentheses matters here, is back vector B A dot C, that's a scalar quantity over here, that's the scalar quantity AC in the direction of B minus cab vector C with the scalar A dot B. This is the back cab identity. So this tells you how you do the uh, cross product in sequence. Okay, so let's prove this. So what is A going to be? So A is going to be the sum. I goes from 1 up to 3 of AI delta I hat. I'm going to cross this with the cross product of B and C. Remember what the cross product of B and C is. I'm going to need three indices for that. It's going to be the sum. J goes from 1 to 3. The sum. K goes from 1 to 3. The sum. L goes from 1 to 3 of epsilon J, K, L. Then I'm going to have a B, J. Then I'm going to have a C, K. And then a delta L hat. All right. So now when I cross product these things, I'm going to have to do the cross product of delta I and delta L. Now delta I cross delta L is going to be the sum over a new index. Uh, so I, let's say I have I, J, K, L, M. Goes from 1 up to 3 of epsilon I, L, M, delta M hat. So we're going to have five sums, the sum i goes from 1 to 3, the sum j goes from 1 to 3, the sum k goes from 1 to 3, the sum l goes from 1 to 3, the sum m goes from 1 to 3. Now, initially when we're doing these vector identities, it's very, very useful to route the sums just to keep track of everything in sequence. Eventually, when we get to a more advanced state, we'll figure out a notation called Einstein notation, which allows us to what? Not write so many sums and make this a lot easier. But at the first stage, while we're learning to prove these identities, it's oftentimes helpful just to write down the sums so you can keep track of each index separately without having to use complicated Einstein conventions. All right. Now what will I have? I'm going to have, in sequence, I'll have an A, I, a B, J, a C, K. Then I'll have an epsilon. J, K, L. And then I will have a what? I will have an epsilon, epsilon, I, L, M from that term. And then I'll have a delta M hat. Now what we can do is we can use the match mismatch identity, but I need to have this L index in the spot of M. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this, because if I flip two indices in the permutation symbol, I get a sign change. So this is also the same as a negative, negative epsilon i m l. Okay? So now what we can use is we can use match mismatch. So I'm going to mass mismatch over l. So we're going to get rid of the l summation. So we're going to have minus the sum i goes from 1 to 3. The sum j goes from 1 to 3. The sum k goes from 1 to 3. The sum m goes from 1 to 3. I'm going to have A, I, B, J, C, K. And then I'm going to use mass mismatch, which says I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a delta J, I, delta J, I, and then delta I, delta K, M, the second, the second, K, M, minus what? Minus delta J, M delta ki by match mismatch in the direction of delta m hat. Now, we're going to have two separate sums. So what we'll do is we'll take this negative over here, turn it into a positive, make that negative, make that positive, and then let's gather the terms over here. So let's look at the positive terms first. So what we're going to do with those positive terms is everywhere I see a j, everywhere I see a j, I'm going to replace with an m, and I can replace i and k with each other. So what we're going to do is let's, let's choose the indices to keep. I'll keep i and j over here. So I'm going to keep i and j. So all the m's are going to turn into j's. So m is going to turn into j. And I is going to turn, K is going to turn into I. So I'm going to have the sum over J. The sum over J goes from 1 to 3. The sum 
i goes from 1 to 3. And then what we have, so this is going to be a delta. I'm going to keep the a, i, keep that. The j gets replaced with m. So I'm going to keep the j. So I'm going to have a b, j. I'm going to have a c, k, but k gets replaced with i. So I'm going to have a c, i, c, i. And then these, I'm keeping the j. So the j, the m gets replaced with j. So I have a delta j hat. And then the minus terms, what's going to happen? I'm going to keep, what should we keep for the minus terms? Well, for the minus terms, I'm going to try to keep what? Let's see over here where you have a j, and a, so i has to be equal to j, so we can keep the i sum. I'm going to keep the sum i goes from 1 to 3. And then I'm going to keep what? Let's keep the k sum, so I'll have the sum k goes from 1 up to 3. Good. Now, what are we going to have? So now, everywhere I see, so I've kept i, so I'm going to have an a i. Then what will we have? So we have a j, but j gets replaced with i, so that's going to be a b i. And then I have c k, but k is going to stay k, so I'm going to have a c k. And now m gets replaced with k, so this is going to be a delta m hat. Good, we're done. What do we have over here? I see an a i c i. So that, the sum over i, a i c i, so this is going to simplify to what? This first thing over here is just the sum. i goes from 1 to 3 of a i b i times what? The sum j goes from 1 to 3 of what? Of bj delta j of, um, that's a ci. So, sorry, that's going to be a ci, not bi. That's going to be a ci, ci. And then bj delta j hat minus the sum i goes from, or let's say, I'm going to sum over i. i goes from 1 to 3 of ai bi times the sum, k goes from 1 up to 3, of what? Of ck delta k. Notice this first number over here, well, a i c i, that summation is just a dot c. So this is a dot c in the direction of b, minus a dot b in the direction of c. So I have back minus cab, and that proves the back cab identity. Thank you very much.